Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be answering a very important question, which is why we would want to use ViewPress. So let's go to our second ViewPress post, and let me just zoom in so you can see the screen a little bit easier. So this is ViewPress Tutorial 2, Why Use ViewPress. So in this video we're going to be going over eight main points. The first one is what is ViewPress, so we're going to go over what ViewPress is, and then this will give us a better understanding of why we would want to use ViewPress. And then we're going to go over some different types of websites, and we'll be going over these four different types of websites over here. And we're mainly going to be looking at them in terms of search engine optimization or SEO, the speed and the ease of updating. And this will, you know, as we're going through them, we'll be able to look at the pros and cons of each one and to be able to get a better sense of when we should use a specific type of website. And then we're going to go over the use cases for SSGs. So SSGs are static site generators, and that's actually what ViewPress is. So we're going to go over um, when we should use a static site generator. And then we're going to go over how it works in ViewPress, so how static site generation works in ViewPress. So just briefly go over how ViewPress implements it. And then we're going to look at the theming that's provided by ViewPress. And we'll just do a brief overview of that, and then we'll look at some example themes that you can check out down here. And then we'll just go over a brief overview of the plugin API, and then we'll look at some example plugins. And we went over some of these plugins in the previous video. And then we're going to look at some of the main features that are provided by ViewPress, and then we'll look at some comparisons with some similar technologies um, to ViewPress. And this will give us a better idea of when we should use ViewPress uh, versus these other technologies. All right, so to start with, what is ViewPress? So ViewPress is a minimalistic static site generator, or an SSG, with a view-powered theming system and plugin API. And originally, it was created to serve the documentation needs of Vue's own subprojects. So it comes with a default theme that's optimized for writing technical documentation. So the CodeMonkeys blog actually uses this default theme. So we'll be going over that in, in more detail in future videos. So as well as being useful for writing technical documentation, uh, ViewPress also has a blog plugin. And we're going to be looking at that in more detail in future tutorials as well. And the blog plugin is actually what the CodeMonkeys blog uses. And this provides us things like pagination, for example. And so again, to just kind of clear up any confusion, we're going to look at what an SSG is. We're going to talk about this theming system in more detail, go over that plugin API and provide the list of some of the features provided by ViewPress. And then we'll give that quick comparison to some similar technologies. All right, so let's look at these different types of websites. So before we define what an SSG is, we're going to look at these different types of websites. And this will give us a better understanding of the pros and cons of using an SSG. So like I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at these websites mainly in terms of search engine optimization, SEO, the speed, and the ease of updating. So let's start with a static website. All right, so a static website is gonna use static HTML pages that potentially have some CSS and JavaScript in them. And the pages will get updated or uploaded to a content delivery network or a web host. And then here's a simple diagram that sort of illustrates this process. So we have a page request that comes into the server, and then the server is going to return to us a fully rendered HTML page. Now, the pros of this is that it's SEO friendly. Um, this means that the search engine can easily crawl the site and be able to index the site um, because the HTML pages that it's looking at are fully rendered. So it's going to have all of the content in it, all of the metadata that the search engine needs to be able to easily crawl it and index it. Now, some of the cons are that we need to do a request to the server for each page a user visits. So every page that the user visits, we're doing a request to the server and that can slow down the site. And it's gonna be difficult to update since you need to rewrite the same code on multiple pages. So if you have a footer, for example, that's on pretty much every single page of the website, you're gonna to have to go to every single page that uses that and update the code there. And static, Websites tend to have limited functionality and they generally don't contain any dynamic data. All right, so let's look at single page applications now or SPAs. So this is your typical view and react application. And here a single request is made to the server, which returns a simple HTML page with the styles and the scripts linked. 
So the SPA then handles the rendering of the page content in the browser. And this is things like routing and the data, for example. And then here's a simple diagram that just illustrates the process. So initially we have our, our initial page request only. So that goes to the server and then the server is going to return to us a simple HTML page. Now, some of the pros of this are is that it's fast, so we don't have to make any extra requests to the server when navigating to new pages. Um, and this is because the SBA handles rendering the pages in the browser. And it's also component driven, which means easier updating. So for example, if we have that footer again, uh, we just need to update that in one file. So the footer component, we can just make a component for it and then we can update it there versus having to update it for every single page that the footer is on. Now, some of the cons are is that it's more difficult for search engines to crawl and index the site um, or search engine optimization because the page that's initially returned by the server is a simple HTML page that doesn't have all of the all of the content and all of the metadata that a search engine likes to see to be able to easily crawl it and index the website. All right, so that's an SPA. And now we have server side rendered SSR websites. So this is a traditional PHP site that will use this technique as well as Node.js applications that use Express and EJS for templating. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna return an HTML page that is built on the fly for each request using templates and data. All right, so each page returned is a static HTML page. And here's a simple diagram that sort of just illustrates the process. So we initially have our page requests that go to the server, and then the server is gonna render these page requests on the fly, and then it's gonna to return to us fully rendered HTML. All right, so the pros of this are is that it's SEO friendly, since each request returns a fully rendered HTML page. This means a search engine can easily crawl it, can easily index it, um, because it's gonna have all of the content, all of the metadata that it would like to see to be able to, to easily um, crawl and index the page. Now it's also easy to update because we're using a templating system when we implement this, uh, the uh, SSR. But the cons of it are is that since the server has to send back fully rendered HTML pages for each request, it can slow down the page rendering. And that's because this server over here is rendering these pages on the fly. So each request we make, we're then rendering the page on the server and then we're returning that fully rendered HTML. All right, so now let's talk about static site generators or SSGs, and this is what ViewPress is. So an SSG creates pre-rendered static HTML pages using a combination of templates, components, and data. So these static HTML pages are generated at build time before deployment. All right, so the static pages will then be deployed to the web after we build them all out. So here's a simple diagram that illustrates the process. So we have our initial page request only that goes to the server. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return that fully rendered HTML page. So the pros of this are is that it's SEO friendly since it returns fully rendered HTML, which can then be crawled and indexed easily by a search engine. And then navigating to new pages is fast since after the initial request, the site's going to behave like a normal SPA. All right. And then it's easy to update since the site is component driven. So again, if we have our footer component that's used on multiple pages of the site, we can just put it into, into that one component, update that component in that one file, as opposed to having to update it in multiple files. All right. So now some of the cons are though, is that we have to rebuild the static pages every time a change is made to the site. Uh, then, so this means that the build time is going to increase as more and more pages are added. All right. So as we add more pages to the site, we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to, to build, to build it out every single time. And that's going to increase the build time as we add more pages. All right. So that's the static site generator. So now let's look at the use cases for SSGs. So again, SSGs are going to give us static HTML pages at build time, and then they're going to behave like an SPA and they're well suited for websites that don't have a lot of frequent content changes. All right. So 
that would be like a personal website or a portfolio or some documentation or a blog, uh, you know, some social media website where people are constantly posting and commenting. Um, and SSG isn't suitable for that because we're constantly making uh, these frequent updates to the website. Whereas for, you know, a blog or some technical documentation site, we're only going to update that, you know, once, maybe twice a day. Um, we're not going to be updating it that frequently. So static site generators well suited for these types of websites. So this is how it works in ViewPress. So like other SSGs, the static HTML page is going to be rendered at build time. And then the static HTML pages are going to be deployed to the web. All right. So once the page is loaded, view takes control of the static content and the site's going to behave like an SPA. And then the SPA is then powered by view, view router and webpack. And we'll see how um, we can use view um, in our view press site in future tutorials. And then each markdown file is going to get compiled into HTML with markdown it. And this is then going to be processed as the template of a view component. And this is what enables us to use view directly in our markdown files and also makes it possible to embed dynamic content. So we'll be going over um, how to use view and markdown files in, uh, in future tutorials. Now, also, as I'm going through and you see all these different links, um, be sure to, you know, as you're reading through the post, you can just go through and just click on these links and just read the documentation there. Uh, if you want to learn more about markdown it, more about view, view router, whatever it is. All right, so now let's talk about the theming in ViewPress. So a theme in ViewPress allows us to control how our project is structured. So we have the option of simply using the default theme that's provided by ViewPress. Uh, we also have the option of using theme inheritance, and that's going to allow us to create child themes based on parent themes, um, or we could write our own theme from scratch. So the CodeMonkeys blog actually uses the default theme um, and then it uses theme inheritance to make some changes to the default theme. Uh, so it's actually a child theme of, uh, of the default theme. So within a theme, you're able to create directories that handle things like global components, uh, just components, layouts, styles, and templates. And then you can also create files for theme configurations and app level enhancements. And we're going to be going over... Um, you know, global components, components, all of these things in, uh, in future tutorials. And then when writing your own theme, the only file that is necessary is a layout.view file. Everything else is up to you. And then you can publish your theme as an NPM package, which allows other people to easily install it. Um, and as I said before, the CodeMonkeys blog is currently a child theme that inherits from the default theme. And eventually I would like to be able to publish it as an NPM package so then people could easily install it. And uh, we'll be going over the directory structure, what each directory in a theme is used for, theme configuration, app level enhancement, and theme inheritance in future tutorials. Um, and then here's some example themes that we can check out. So you can go to this example theme right here. So if you like the way that this theme looks, um, these different posts, custom pages, change logs. So if you like how this theme looks, you could actually just take this theme and you could just use this. Um, you also have this theme right here. Uh, so they have a ViewPress 2 option right here. Um, and then we'll just look at the ViewPress 1 option. So here, you know, this is kind of what their theme would look like. Uh, they have a different guide, some config stuff in there. So you like the way that this looks you could use this theme uh, and then there's you know a bunch of other different themes that you could use and then just here's just some examples of different themes uh, and what they would offer you so the, that is theming in ViewPress so now let's talk about the plugin API so plugins allow you to add global level functionality to ViewPress and then you can configure them by passing in options and you can also write your own plugins and publish them as NPM packages. All right, so we're going to go over installing and configuring plugins in future tutorials. And then here's just some examples of plugins. So we have the ViewPress blog, uh, blog plugin, and here's the uh, documentation for that right here. And that's what the CodeMonkeys blog uses. And then we also have a plugin for active header links. 
uh, the back to top, which we saw in the first video. So this is the documentation for that. And it's right there. If I click this, it would bring us back up to the top. Uh, we have a plugin for search. So this is our search box up here. Um, SVG icons, which are those icons that you saw in the footer of the website. So these are all just different plugins um, that ViewPress provides us with. And it has way more plugins that we can actually use. Um, so now let's just go over some of the features that ViewPress comes with. So we have built-in markdown extensions. So we have things like a table of contents, custom containers, line highlighting, line numbers. You can import code snippets. So here's uh, the custom container. So uh, like I showed you in that first video, that little tip right there uh, in that one blog post, that was a, um, a custom container. And then you can have one for tips, warnings, dangers, a little detail with uh, when you click on that, it'll bring a little drop down down there. Uh, so that is one of the features provided by um, provided by ViewPress. Uh, you also have the ability to use view and markdown files. So this will give us things like templating. So here you have different templating. So um, you can kind of just go through this documentation and see how uh, ViewPress lets us use templating uh, in in our markdown files here and then how we can use components in our markdown files and then we also have a view powered custom theme system so this will give us uh, different site and uh, page metadata that we can easily set um, and then we also have um, things like content excerpts that we can use and then we have the default theme uh, that gives us a responsive layout, an optional home page, a uh, customizable nav bar and sidebar, a uh, simple out of the box header based search. So that's this search up here. So that's just going to search your website for, um, for header tags. Uh, also has Algolia search. So you also have the option of using that search instead of this uh, out of the box header based search. Uh, also gives us the ability to show when pages were last updated. Uh, gives us Git repository and edit links, custom layout for specific pages and code groups and code blocks. So this is uh, what I showed you as well in uh, in the first tutorial when you kind of see these different code blocks. So this is all provided by ViewPress out of the box. And, uh, and we also have a blog theme, numerous community themes, official plugins and community plugins. And then you can find a list of all these themes, plugins and more resources at Awesome ViewPress. So now ViewPress, Awesome ViewPress has version one and version two. So we'll just be looking at version one. And this is all of uh, all of the different stuff that uh, that ViewPress, that the ViewPress uh, community and the official maintainers of ViewPress have uh, have made for us. So you can check out a bunch of different cool stuff here. So now let's look at some different comparisons with similar technologies. So here's some similar technologies and how they compare with ViewPress. So you have uh, Nuxt, and this is designed for building applications, um, whereas ViewPress is focused on content-centric static sites with a focus on technical documentation. And then you have Docsify slash Docute. Um, I don't really know how to say that, but we'll just go with that. And then both are runtime driven, uh, so they're not SEO friendly. And it's good if SEO isn't a concern um, and you don't want to deal with installing a lot of dependencies. And then you have Hexo. It's a static and string based theming system. So we're unable to take advantage of view for layout and the interactivity uh, that we would like to have. And the markdown rendering configuration uh, isn't that flexible. And then you also have Gitbook. So Gitbook. Um, allows uh, the uh, development reload performance isn't ideal with a large amount of files. It has limited navigation structure for the default theme and the theming system isn't view based. So if you want to use view, obviously uh, your best option for a static site generator is going to be ViewPress. Um, so, you know, just to, now let's just go over just a brief recap of what we went over in this video. So in this video, we just kind of went over what ViewPress is. We looked at some different types of websites. We looked at static websites, single page applications, server side rendered websites, static site generators. We kind of went over 
the use cases for static site generators, um, how ViewPress implements static site generation. Uh, we went over a brief uh, overview of the theming in ViewPress. We looked at some different examples. We went over um, a brief overview of the plugin API, and we looked at some different examples of plugins. And then we looked at some of the main features that ViewPress comes with. And then we just did our brief comparison uh, between ViewPress and these similar technologies that you have available to you. All right, so in the next video, which is actually the previous uh, pagination here, just the way that the, the blog posts are ordered, um, but we're gonna be looking at the ViewPress tutorial three, which is installation and setup. All right, so we will see you in the next video.